technology control, this is called a, a queen cunts. And what it does is it shows you um, the futility of trying to chase, chase variation. So um, what we do is ask a person to set, set their machine on a certain size and then run their machine. So if you set your machine and this is the size that you're running it to and you run five parts, those five parts have a distribution that kind of looks like this. So you run another five parts. And you're starting to build a distribution. But what happens is if you run just one part and then you say it's good and you check the next part and it's over here, you say, well, what I'll do is I'll adjust my machine because I'm a good worker. I'll just move it a little bit so all of them will be right there. So you start adjusting your machine and you start running them over there. Now you're getting pieces over. Well, let me move it back. That'll help because now I've got pieces over there. And what you do is when you keep adjusting based on one or two pieces, you maximize variation. When if you just leave it alone and let it run, you'll find out what the natural shape of them. You're going to have a few here, you're going to have a few there, but the more you adjust it, you'll start getting pieces here and here, and your bell will look like this rather than something like that. So never make an adjustment on just one piece. You always run a group of pieces, take the average, and say this is what my machine is running on average. Then if this is too wide, then you start to reduce why is my machine running this wide. But if you start just moving sizes, you'll be all over the place. So this is what we use for that. This is a what Dr. Edward Deming, um, a guru in, in quality control, used to call the red bead machine, and all of his beads were red in his machine. And what it is, is, is if I give you the proper instructions on how to run this machine, you should be able to run this machine and not produce any bad parts. So all the white part, uh, beads are good parts. If it's any other color, it's a defective part. So if I tell you to lay this on the, edge of the machine and follow the contour of the machine down, get that overflow, minimum agitation, and you bring that out of there. If you do exactly what I say, you should have all white beads. Well, the problem is, and what I do is, I start off with all white beads. So the first time they do it, they're all white beads because you did exactly what I said. But then, have all of those other beads in little bags like this and this will be like temperature. Temperature will affect the part or stock that's coming to it. The stock was too hard. It came from the vendor too hard or it's too soft. Well that'll change this, the variation. So you begin to release uh, causes into the and no matter if you do exactly what I said but you have these um, ident identifiable causes you're going to get bad parts. So what you have to do is make sure you can identify what happened. Otherwise, it's a fallacy to think that just because you tell me to give you good parts and you give me bad stock or I have a bad tool or these other temperature changes that I won't get a bad part. And, um, and I think that kind of helps even the company side say, I can't expect just because I tell you to do something for it to happen without making sure that all of these things are under control. When I lose control of this, I'll lose control of that.